You're listening to Tapestry, a podcast by music lover for music lovers. I'm your host, Kelly. Music is a thread that weaves a course throughout our lives. Join me on a journey to unravel that thread and bring you the stories behind what inspires musicians to create. Side note, Tapestry is an uncensored podcast. Don't say I didn't warn you. So, hello all my listeners. If that introduction sounds really strange and really new to you, that's because it's both. After 36 episodes of finally bitching and moaning about how I never write any music and I'm not quite sure what to do, I'm not sure why inspiration hit me in the head like a sack of bricks, but it did. I think maybe after interviewing enough musicians, I had heard the suggestion that you should just work with what you have and took it to heart. So that was me playing bass, drums, and adding some synths in GarageBand. If you'd like to hear the track, for some reason, without my voiceover, just shoot me a message anywhere and I'd be happy to send it to you. So without further ado, allow me to introduce the real guest of this episode, the Connecticut-based math rock and post-hardcore three-piece The Refectory, who joined me to chat about some personal family experiences that have influenced their new music, how trying to control an audience's emotions can limit your art, and some very dicey experiences from their past tours. Here's a little sample of their song Sheep from their latest EP, Axe Eater. tonight with the three members of the refectory and um, you guys are all in your studio right now but um, as I usually do with a multi-person call I just want to have everybody mention their name so I can get a sense for who's who and uh, what instrument you play. All right uh, I'll start Uh, I'm Robbie Voza Uh, I sing and play guitar slash bass in uh, the refectory and I'm Nick Restivo and I play drums. And I'm John DiCarlo, and I play guitar slash bass. Okay, thank you guys. I really hope I can keep that straight. Sounds <laughs> yeah. a, tiny, a tiny bit similar to one another. Because, you know, <laughs> usually after 45 minutes, I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so you guys are from Bethel, Connecticut, is that correct? Yeah, more or less uh, western Connecticut. Uh, I grew up in Bethel. John is actually originally from uh, from Virginia. Yeah, I grew up down there. Came up here for college. That's where I met. Ah, Rob. and then yeah. you just never left. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm from Monroe. It's just a few towns over, but I pretty much lived here my whole okay. life. So I've had a lot of New England guests recently. Um, I'm all for it. So <laughs> nice. Um, nice. But yeah, so usually how I start these interviews is. Um, I just kind of ask each one of you guys a little bit about your musical history. I just want to get a sense of, for for all three of you, sort of how you came to become musicians and, um, you know, what instrument you started playing or if there was anything kind of formative in your life that made you want to pick up the instrument that you did. Uh, Yeah, uh, this is Robbie. I'll start. Um, So I, I think I started playing guitar when I was maybe around like 14 years old. Um, and I just started, I don't know, learning different chords and whatnot. And then I, uh, I wrote like my first song and then I was pretty much hooked after that. Um, and then from there I was in a couple different bands. Um, and then I was, and then I, uh, joined a band or started a band with a former member named Mike. Um, and he, uh, that was called the ghost sonata. And, uh, that's where I met John. Um, and then... Let's see, from there, uh, there was a, a band in between that and the refectory, and then it was pretty much uh, the refectory for the last about four years, I think. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my music stuff. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm, it's Nick. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know, I, I, when I was young, probably like, maybe eight years old. I, uh, I went to this like summer camp thing, um, that, you know, my parents signed me up for, and there was like some, uh, music program there. Um, and this guy would just bring in all these different instruments. And, uh, so I started 
playing drums like shortly thereafter because I just I don't know I was pretty fascinated with it and I thought it was really cool that you could kind of like make stuff up anywhere you go that like I mean not that you could like bring a drum set everywhere but like I could tap on shit and it's just like fun to to tap that, on stuff know? yeah fun, yeah, fun, fun to annoy others with <laughs> yeah yeah tap tap got tap. a lot of dirty looks <laughs> So <laughs> I, I can relate, Nick. I was the, the pen tapper in class, the foot shaker, the, you yes. know, all that, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. People yeah. would be like, stop fucking tapping your foot. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I just found out this year that I have ADHD. So it's like, oh, this makes so much sense. Okay. Makes sense uh, maybe I should great. get tested for that. I was born to be a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome john what are you gonna say that tops that really oh my god uh i guess i mean i started i mean i played like saxophone in like fourth hell fifth yeah grade. yeah uh, i did not like it at all oh. so I actually yeah sorry uh so i, I quit the band <laughs> for a while um and then my friend was in a band and um it was like a group of guys i was just hanging out with and they needed help like recording um like a demo uh so they just had me like learn this little like eight track recorder and I kind of like helped them out with that. And through the process, they realized like, oh, we need a bassist. So the guitarist in that band, uh, his name is Dave, he taught me how to play bass. And then I joined the band. And it was the first like experience I had had like writing songs because um, they didn't play any covers. So we just wrote songs. And I don't know, I caught that bug and then moved to guitar and just never stopped really. And that was back in high school. And then, yeah, I came up to Connecticut for school, learned like recording, uh, met Robbie and Mike and started the Ghost Sonata. Um, yeah, and then just kind of stayed up here ever since playing music, played in a bunch of different bands. Uh, yeah, been doing the refectory since it got started. Gotcha. Now, yeah. a, a lot of times when I talk to musicians and stuff, you know, they're like, okay, we had the idea that we wanted a band, and so we scoured Craigslist, and finally our perfect keyboardist and bassist walked in off the street, and it's been great ever since. But um, <laughs> are, are you guys similar in age, and, like, did you have other similar interests that's just sort of naturally led to the creation of the refectory or like how did uh just how did everything sort of come to be i mean we've had a bunch of different like member changes along the way mm -hmm. um yeah we so the band started without me it was robbie and our friend mike and brian who's actually we share the space with a print shop so he's over on the other side printing right now oh, cool. uh yeah <laughs> yeah um and then yeah we've had a bunch of members cycle in and out uh but we met nick just by playing shows nick's in like 100 110 other bands or so yeah. somewhere in there yeah, yeah. it's a hot commodity drummer. Yeah, yeah. Right. yes <laughs> yeah. uh and we've had people cycle through and just uh our, when our last drummer ben couldn't make it work anymore nick kind of jumped up and then filled the void and it's been like a perfect fit since and yeah we're all pretty similar in age yeah, yeah. um yeah yeah hmm. Did all of you guys go to school for music or totally dissimilar things there? Um, uh, I guess just me, really. I, yeah. I, I think I did one. I think I finished one full semester at University of New Haven for music and sound recording. I don't think I took one music. I, maybe I took a, a music theory class. Mm. Um, and then I went into my second semester. I was like two weeks in and I was like, I'm partying way too much. <laughs> I'm just going to drop out. So... No, I, I don't have a degree or anything. Right. Um, but John did get his uh, music and sound recording degree yeah. at UNH. Well, I went to school for psychology, so. I did <laughs> not know that. Yeah. Nice. Interesting. Yeah. I'm really glad I asked that now because one of my questions later was going to be who writes most of the lyrics on uh, your stuff? And now I have to ask, is it the psychology major? You know, it's it's not. <laughs> I have not written a single lyric for this band. <laughs> but but he will, and uh, we he we actually talked I about will. that the other yeah. day. Oh, you that, will. That, that is a demand. <laughs> <laughs> no, we talked about it the other day because, um, like like we mentioned, Nick's in a couple of other projects, um, and one of his projects uh, called Snowpiler. Um, he's uh, he's the main writer in that. He plays guitar and sings in that. Writes all the lyrics. Um, so we were talking about, you know, having him write some lyrics and stuff too. Um, for this upcoming release, uh, it's been thus far for the, through the writing process, uh, pretty much, pretty even split for lyrics, uh, from what, uh, John's sets of lyrics and then my sets of lyrics. Um, whereas in the past, I think it's been, it's been more of me, but, um, for this release, I, you know, I asked John if he would give me some lyrics cause 
uh, I, I felt like it would be, uh, I don't know. I wanted to have some of his lyrics. He's a good writer. He's a great writer. Thank you. That <laughs> much better than me. No. <laughs> I, I always like talking to musicians, though, where uh, like the vocalist is not the primary songwriter or maybe just on a couple songs they aren't because it always cracks me up when someone else writes stuff for them and then they deliver it to the vocalist to actually do it. And they're like, um, I can't do this. <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> right. uh, it's kind of out of my range. So I've always been curious how bands sort of make that work. And plus, you guys are three piece, so you're all kind of doing some double duties and, and things. Um, but just watching some of your videos and, and seeing everything. I mean, it seems like there's a really good gel there. Thank you. Oh, for thanks. sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Like uh, what's a typical writing session look like for the refectory? <laughs> I guess with your current, yeah, I mean, you can talk about your past lineups too, but with the current three of you, yeah. what does that look like? It's kind of, so uh, thus far, well, that's why it's been Robbie and I bringing ideas, but we're we're about to start writing on some of Nick's ideas too. Uh, but a, a person will have like a section of a song written on their instrument, and they'll bring it in, and we just kind of lay parts over top of it and kind of throw back and forth variations and, and yeah, and, yeah right. uh, song structure ideas. We kind of like throw everything at the wall and then talk out what's what sticks right. and what doesn't. Yeah. It's a real collaborative process. Um, yeah, right. It's, it's been a good it's been a good chemistry so far. For right. Sure. So I mean, yeah. So. Uh, we pretty much bring in like a skeleton almost of a song or a bunch of sections. And it really is like very much a collaborative effort as far as writing goes. It's not like one of us coming in and saying, Hey Nick, play this high hat part here. That's how I heard it in my head. It's, you know, we all have ideas on, on all the different instrument, all the different instrumentation of the songs. And everyone is very open to that, uh, those parts, I guess. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like the songs, I mean, the, the way that we have them like some of them it's it's going to change so much yeah. like uh yeah. the 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 structure changes like uh, indefinitely almost like i feel <laughs> yeah. like there's certain stuff that we have set in stone for some of the songs that like maybe in like a week like robbie will come in and be like dude wait we have to do this and then <laughs> we're like oh yeah we yeah. actually really do yeah. have to we do have that to. So. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. You must do this. Now, <laughs> I was I was looking at your discography and, you know, listening here and there and stuff, and it seems like back around 2016 or so, you you know, you mostly put out some singles and little things here and there, some doodads, and then 2017 you had the, the self-titled, and then you were kind of back to doing some singles. So it seems like there's this ebb and flow here as you're kind of like building up to a new full album. Um, what's what's the stuff that you're working on right now kind of akin to like, what would you say the musical direction you're heading in is? Um, I would say the biggest uh, difference in the newest stuff that we're doing is I'd say it's probably the most technical stuff we've ever done. Um, We've definitely, we've always had a level of uh, I guess mathiness to our music Mm-hmm. Um, but this is definitely, uh, the most technical and mathy it's ever been. And, um, I would attribute that to, uh, Nick's style of drumming. He's, uh, definitely a very tech, technical drummer, Thanks, um, <laughs> and a very good drummer. Um, you know, and that, you know, we, our drummer, all of our drummers in the past have, have been awesome and they've all honestly had a bunch of, they've had their own styles. Um, but Nick's super technical. So, our, you know, it's kind of going that way yeah. very naturally yeah it's um, a lot of fun to like write to the drummer in right. the band mm-hmm. yeah because uh, yeah, i feel like it it does the songs the best service i guess that's interesting yeah. that you you were doing more of writing to the drummer as opposed to the opposite like i think maybe it's because i'm a drummer i always think when i'm listening to stuff i kind of have this tendency to think that the drums were made last which hmm. is kind of unfair hmm. to the drummer, but um, I don't <laughs> right, know why. Right. Certain, yeah, it just seems like, okay, so you're writing your main melodies, your main riffs, and then everything else gets yeah. filled in around it, which is, yeah, right. sort of a discredit well, to the drums. I guess I guess when I say write to the drummer, I mean, like, writing with the drummer's style in mind. Oh, so I gotcha. like, Okay. Yeah, so, like, write, writing with a sense of, like, what... Uh, what voice does the drummer have and what how is this song going to serve that type of voice i guess Mm -hmm. uh but we we are we are have we have some songs or a song in the works where the drum parts have started first 
And we've written a couple sections like that already where Nick has an awesome drum beat. We put parts over it. So, right. So right. That, that, that does happen. Yeah. Now, before I get too far into this, I guess uh, you did make a good point. Okay, I'm asking you about what your next album is going to sound like, and I really haven't allowed you to describe to the listeners what you do sound like currently. And I know that, uh, you know, you guys are sort of a self-professed prog rock, math rock, sort of experimental sort of shebang, and I would agree. But um, what what drew you all to that sound? And I guess, how would you describe the refectory? <clears throat> Um, I think, I think the, the genres that you mentioned are definitely, definitely would describe us well. Uh, I, I'd maybe throw like, like a post hardcore thing in there. Yeah. Um, at least for, you know, our last, from our last release and then through this new stuff, uh, it's definitely been, uh, the heaviest stuff we've ever done, but still maintaining like, you know, that more like technical mathy experimental, if you will. Yeah. Um, side to it. Um, Yeah. Yeah, heavier. Definitely, yeah, heavier. definitely. Like, I, I, I would say, the way I would have described the refectory before I joined the refectory was that they're beefy, <laughs> 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 uh, because like I mean they're they always used to like bring in all their stuff and I'd be like, God damn, so oh, many calves and like holy gear. shit, like so much gear. I'd be like, damn. I'm glad I'm not in that band. I don't have to bring in all that shit. And now I have to bring in all that shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like the tones they achieve are beefy to say the beefy. least. Yeah. I I just want to say I agree only because when when you guys reached out to me, I was like, okay, where do I start? You know, where do I start uh, with listening to this band? And the song I chose was In the Mud. And mm. <laughs> that... Yeah that line gets stuck in my head all the time but the drums are so like chopped up and it's just that song is just hot it's great like i love it <laughs> Thank and you so uh, much. i would consider it beefy so it beefy. like that that's the song I want to rob a bank to. Like, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. It just makes me feel really badass, like walking down the street listening to it. So I was yeah. thinking maybe your new stuff is going to be more of that. But um, so, OK, so I'm thinking of kind of two ways this conversation could go. I guess I, I still want to talk about math rock because really you guys are uh, honestly of my guests. I've had really the first that would kind of qualify in that math world. And so maybe to a lot of my listeners right now they're like what the hell is math rock and that's a great question because it is so hard to pin down what that really means but um i i looked at your list of influences and you know i'm i'm seeing a lot of bands on there that i know like terramelos and giraffes giraffes and stuff and uh you know that to me is that more kind of atonal goofy chords like sparkly tones all kinds of totally. crazy yeah, proggy right. stuff yeah what what about that style of music made you guys feel like you know hey this is the this is the best fit for what we're trying to say i think i think uh any any style of music that really um pushes the boundaries of uh like genre boundaries i guess mm -hmm. uh is has always been really interesting to me um, I, I, even in earlier, you know, in our earliest bands, uh, the band we mentioned before the ghost Sonata, um, we, uh, we really just tried to, uh, push our limits as musicians and like stylistically we tried everything. Um, and that's everything, anything that sounded different to me, um, always was appealing. Even if I didn't necessarily like it at first or understand it, I could always appreciate the musicianship and just how much effort was put into writing. Um, but yeah, I'd say my favorite records are always the ones where I finish it and I don't know how I feel about it. It like confuses me more than anything. And then I have to like go back and listen. And then I start to figure out like, okay, why does this make me feel this way? Or mm. what are these emotions that I'm feeling from this? Like what, what is this? 
And uh, the more uh, like mental energy I invest into those records, the more I love them. Right. If I can hear something and I know what it is immediately, it, it, it doesn't stick to me as long, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I couldn't have said it better myself, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's a great answer. Um, I have to point out that Captain Beefheart was on that list. And yeah. I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. It counts like, for the beef, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to quickly like binge listen um to some Captain Beefheart and then I got really upset to learn that Trout Mask Replica is not on Spotify, but No, it's um, not. I've watched plenty of videos about the making of that album and just how absolutely bizarre it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a weird one. Is yeah. that a sh- and that's a shared favorite of all three of you guys? Um I, I mean yeah, I'm not like that familiar with it, yeah, but probably. I mean, I've yeah definitely checked it out and and yeah, know, and I, I I wouldn't say like I'm a super fan, but Trout Mask Replica is a fantastic album, yeah. and he's uh, he's just freaking Captain Beefheart yeah. is crazy. Yeah, he's like just, the shit yeah. he did with yes. Zappa is like right, really cool mm-hmm. too. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, so that being said, okay, I think it was was it Nick or Robbie? I think that said like okay if you know, this is, this is how I want to express what we have to say. We're just going to try everything. We're, you know, we're not going to leave anything off the table. Um, what life experiences between you three have sort of led to the lyrical content and, you know, just musical content of what you have out there right now? Is there anything like really striking? Um, I mean, the new records about dads i guess yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah, dad rock it's dad Please rock. explain <laughs> yeah uh just like past experiences i mean um i don't have any kids but i know a lot of people that do have kids um i don't think i'm gonna have kids uh but i think uh <laughs> you got I'm, dogs. Not, I'm not yeah i got dogs yeah i'm at the age now where um so my dad at my age now i would have been four years old uh so to like put myself in his place um and think about like the things that he was going through and then sort of like uh, the childhood that I had uh, with him uh, gives me a, a different sort of perspective, but you still can't like, I still can't remove myself from the experiences that I had as a kid in that household, you know? Um, so it's a, it's this weird dichotomy of like, okay, I can empathize with what it must be like to have like two little kids at this age, but also um, the like stressful reactions that, that induced still had that effect on me as a kid. Mm. So it's this, uh, it's that weird like give and take, I guess. Yeah. Interesting. I never thought I'd hear dads as an answer to that question. But <laughs> go, go dads. Our, our lyrics are about the band Dads. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <a tribute> album. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys going to be touring soon with um, mom jeans? <laughs> <laughs> Sucker <laughs> mommy. <laughs> or yo, know, queen. Of, yeah, queen of jeans. I think is a band I've seen live. Maybe. Ooh, queen of sure. jeans. Queen of jeans. Yeah. Are they a Philly band? No, they're may I don't know. Maybe I can't remember. I think I saw them with uh, Law Dispute and oh, ooh, ooh, nice. I don't know. Whatever. Nice. I'm, go- I'm going off topic because how often do I get to talk about Mom Jeans on my podcast? Uh. But um, <laughs> uh, that's that's funny. We're you know I'm talking about Law Dispute and stuff. I'm sorry I keep fixating on math rock, but. I just always find it interesting to see how other people describe it. And math rock is so tied to like the Midwest emo mm-hmm. scene. Right, and it's right. just sort of funny to me because it seems like they should be so such intrinsically different things. But here we are. Um, right. <laughs> so tell me about your guys' scene. Cause I, I'll be honest, you know, I, I know a lot of bands from a lot of places, but, uh, other than Orbiter, shout out to Mike from Orbiter. I really know very few bands from Connecticut. So what's your, uh, local like stomping ground, like when it comes to shows and stuff? Uh, I mean, we, we have a lot of venues for sure. Uh, and there, yeah. there are a ton of, uh, a ton of bands that are like up and coming and, you know, lot that have like you know wrapped it up sadly yeah, right. uh but i mean i i love the connecticut music scene i think it's it's a really unique one i think i think it's a hidden gem too because like i think people are like all like really you know they make a big deal about the new york and the boston scene and i feel like um right it, it can be kind of largely overlooked, overlooked because of the sure. fact that it's like this kind of weird in between this weird like limbo yeah. but it is a, a, 
a very active scene and like a, a very supportive one right. at that. Yeah. Right, right. And I, I would say the DIY scene right now is the best it's been in probably the last <sighs> even five years, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's getting really good. There's a, there's a bunch of DIY venues, you know, a lot of house shows going on, um, which we honestly prefer. Uh, yeah. At least at this point, we like yeah. playing house shows. They, they're the most intimate. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say it, it had. I, I would say the Connecticut scene was pretty stagnant for a while. Yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, um, Robbie and Jono can definitely attest to that more than I can because they've been in bands for like way longer than I have. But quick, quick shout out to their their old project, the Ghost Sonata. I discovered them literally when I was in high school. I was at an Appleseed Cast show yeah. and I saw them. And it was also like, unfortunately, like one of their last shows or something. Yeah. And like, yeah. I was like, who the fuck was that awesome band with that like cool, like chanty thing at the end? I was like, that is so cool. And then like, yeah, come to discover that, you know, wind up like reconnecting with them way yeah. down the line. Going yeah, from guess, fan to member. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I feel like there's a strong, like, there's a bunch of different, um, like, sub genres inside the Connecticut. It's not like one homogenous thing. There's like yeah. an indie scene. There's a bunch of mathy bands. There's a heavier scene. But it's it's not uncommon to find, like, a mixed bill or a bill with just, like, a one subset of bands on it, um, right. which is something I appreciate. Like, yeah. at any on any night, you could go find a show that has, like, a certain type of music. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I do. I do feel like the closer you get to the Eastern Seaboard, though, the more progressive your music gets. I swear to God, because Pittsburgh, I love our music scene, but it's like a wasteland with no prog bands. And really? No and like no <laughs> math rock bands. I can name like three. That's and so strange. Philly is overflowing with them. New York is overflowing right. with them. Boston right. has a lot of stuff going on. Right. So I kind of figured you guys might geographically sort of you know, fill in there. I did, um, I did look and see some of the bands you've gotten to play with though. Actually. Okay. So I lied mile marker zero. I did, I did know them. Um, and I think you guys have played with them and like, uh, countdown from 10 and invalids and stuff like that. You guys really run the gamut. I mean, I imagine it's maybe terrible or great to book you because it seems like you, you guys can just kind of adapt to anything really. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like because we kind of hit on a, a couple different genres, um, we can usually fit in with a lot of different styles of music, which I feel like is good. I mean, I think that if we're playing with like, you know, poppier bands, I think you'll out of like their crowd that they might bring, there might be that one person that's like, doesn't isn't really into it and it's just there like being brought along with a friend <laughs> and then we come on they're like whoa like i didn't expect this you know like right um but you know but we could still play those shows right you know, the yeah. light show that uh, you know that's what that's i was just them. gonna start talking about <laughs> the yeah. lights <laughs> yeah that uh since we got in contact has been a big draw so tell me about the oh. sweet sweet synchronized light bars so we'll, uh, we'll let john will take this one <laughs> Uh, that started uh, like a year ago, two, a year and a half maybe. I think, two, two yeah. Years ago. We we got it started with like we wanted to like do something different, I guess, with our live show. And we had talked about like how do we incorporate lights, and at some point I was like, all right, screw it, we're just gonna do it. So we bought like a couple lights and hooked them up, and it was probably like the worst light show you've ever seen in your life. Because there were like three <laughs> lights, and we turned all the lights off. You still couldn't see anything. Uh, so it's been a slow process of like acquiring. I think we've got like nine lights now. Um, and I just hook them up to uh, my pedal board and I, I tap through like all these synchronized changes as we play our songs. Right. It's kind of like playing another instrument in addition to playing the guitar to the point where now it's weird if we play our set and I don't play the lights with <laughs> it. It feels, it feels empty. I don't know. But right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, been a, it's been a long work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> is, your, is your pedal board already pretty big to begin with? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like a little tiny lightboard. Now, yeah, it's. I pull it out of my case, and people go, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I I have learned that from dating a guitar player now that yeah. you they just I'm saying they so derogatively here, but they just <laughs> never can buy enough pedals. I right. swear. Well, it's 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 a thing. I can, I, I can stop anytime. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's an addiction, certainly, but I don't like I don't like when people will look at a pedal board and then like make an assumption about a band or like um 
think that like a band is good because of their pedal board or like I don't know make preconceived notions like it's supposed to be about like the music that we're playing and not like the gear we have or like right. the the I don't know yeah. I ran into this like when I played in a math rock band uh, another math rock band <laughs> I would tap a lot and people would be like oh my god I just want to see you tapping it's like well no just like listen to the music it's right. it's not about There's like the song technique. Here. <laughs> yeah yeah it's about the song you play yeah huh thing with pedals there's a pedal the pedal culture is a whole like yeah rabbit hole i guess i i do find it really interesting because uh you know I don't, I don't listen to a lot of bands that are like shoegazy i mean i'm just starting to get into that but i do find it hilarious that there's an entire subgenre that's just in reference to staring down at your pedal board <laughs> right yeah. um and i always <laughs> yeah. wonder because i'm not a guitarist like how you contend with that i mean that's a good point you mentioned like playing your light bars is almost like playing another instrument. Um, that yeah. has to be really challenging, trying to know exactly what you're doing at what time to make what sound. To, it's just, there's so much that live bands have to worry about. And it's just, it's crazy that anyone can keep it together and put on a good show at all to me. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, it's, it's, it's practice, I guess. I mean, I don't, practice, I don't know yeah. how drummers honestly use all four limbs. I'm just using <laughs> my, my two hands and I just tap with my foot, you know? Yeah, so. I, it's it's probably like playing the drums. I don't know when you can split four rhythms across right. four appendages. Yeah. yeah, that seems impossible to me. Hmm. You could do it, John. I don't think so. <laughs> it's all muscle memory, John. Yeah. Little... Thousand hours. Right. So, do you guys have a, a light bar? Sh like, you basically have a setup for every song. Because yeah. I'm not a yeah. technical person here. So, when you're saying, okay, it's like. I have the changes all locked in for all of our songs. You can just, can you just make that work on the fly? Like, well, so will we still blink and stuff on the fly? It's, uh, so we set up the lights that uh, we'll write, so it's, we write the song, and then when the song is finished, uh, we go through every section, and then we determine, like, okay, what, what kind of lights does this section mm. need, you know? Is this going to be, like, green lights? Is this going to be, like, a blue strobe? Like, where, what sort of hits inside of this section need changes? And then we uh, program all of that out. So it's like one long list of sequential changes. And I break it up by section. And then I just know like, okay, in this, this section, like let's say we've got, you know, quarter note pulses and I want to like change the lights on every pulse. So I know when we get to that part, I've got to like tap that change out. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just do that through the whole song. And then the more that I learn it, just the, the more I know it. And then it's just kind of, I don't know, locked away in my head. Cool. Yeah, muscle yeah. memory. Muscle memory. Right. It's it's like learning a song. It's just like a different aspect of it. It's the visual aspect of a song, I guess. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. that's so yeah. much to keep track of. I, <laughs> I I give you guys a lot of credit. Yeah, I mean, when yes. when you're like a nationally touring band and you have your own sound person and your own, right? You know, right. light person and pyrotechnics. Like, right. there's a that's reason next. it's yeah. a whole separate yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll save money. I guess we don't need other people. Yeah, <laughs> do it all yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think uh, people are a lot more capable than they give themselves credit for. If you just sort of push yourself into <laughs> it, you can you can kind of expand your boundaries more and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has the reception to that been like pretty awesome? I feel like it would be pretty awesome. I I, I think for the most part, yes. Uh, minor thing, minor things that we've run into is uh, a couple house venues. Uh, we've arrived and they've been like, we know you have lights, but you can't do strobes tonight. And mm. I just like, uh, you don't understand, but this is, we can't just pull those out. It's <laughs> yeah. all programmed. It's not like a salad, and, right. pull the tomatoes off. Right. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and, uh, but fortunately, uh, they, they were just like, okay, then we just have to announce that there's going to be strobes if anyone is, you know, epileptic or yeah. uh, prone to having seizures from blinking lights. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so that sort of stuff worked out. And then I think usually pe the only, I wouldn't even say it's negative feedback. I think for some people, if they're not expecting it, I think with the style of music that we play, it can be almost be, we've gotten almost that it's a little too intense. Yeah, overwhelming. So, overwhelming, yeah. overwhelming because mm -hmm. the music's kind of hitting you hard and then the lights are, uh, you know, yeah. um, but I still feel like even that made someone feel something and i don't mm -hmm. think that they'll forget that no that might mean that they will never come to a show again <laughs> right, right. i will never but forget they yeah. won't forget that How they saw terrible. the terrible <laughs> yeah. i guess no yeah. that, that, that's an excellent point um 
when I had a recent interview with Greg Marquis from the band Actor Observer, he kind of had, yeah, he had a kind of similar point about that. And I really liked his sentiment where he said something to the effect of, okay, like when you come to a space where there's going to be a concert happening, you, in a certain sense, kind of relinquish any control, kind of. Right. And I mean, he said it's really hard to strike that balance because, you know, he he's in a post-hardcore band and uh, tons of energy and mosh pits and stuff. He's like, I don't want to see people like punching each other in the face. But at the same time, if I made you feel something, then right. I've done my job. But, you know, it's a, it's a fine line to walk. So uh, it's... I don't know. There's all these considerations for live bands nowadays. And I guess it just sort of depends on what you're playing, where you're playing, who you're playing with, what the space is like, Eh, you know? Yeah. But if you're going to a live show, I think you're going to experience art. And that the part of that, like social contract is that emotions will be evoked, you know, if if you decide like, okay, I only want these specific emotions to be evoked. Right. Uh, I, I don't think that you're... It limits your art. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah, I know my, my girlfriend won't come to see us if we're playing in like a small space because <laughs> it's too much. She said it's like, mm-hmm. it, it makes her feel things that she's like not prepared to feel on that scale. She, I mean, that's like a bigger room and then it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Huh. I, wow. I can relate to that as a really like expressive, passionate person because th- I don't know. I've As I've gotten older, I've, I don't know. I go to shows and then I'll like leave early if I'm just not feeling it. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't sure. know. It's yeah, tough absolutely. though. It's tough because you think, okay, I paid. I want to be supportive and you know I want to be here for the right reasons. I want to w- witness what these people are doing. But I don't know if it's just because I'm getting close to thirty and I need more sleep, or if I'm just being <laughs> an asshole or what. But I'm like, ah, this just isn't doing it for me sorry bye uh you know right part of that's probably also the i mean the older you get the more shows you've been to the more you've seen like yeah that was that was part of my uh thought around like suggesting i guess it was really my suggestion but like talking about get a getting a light show making it something different so it's not Mm -hmm. just like seeing the same thing over and over again you know right yeah it's still yeah yeah, and I mean, there still is a novelty to live music, I guess, because we now live in an age where everything's so easily accessible online. Yeah, you guys are doing what you need to do to stand out, I suppose. Right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Hmm. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna like keep that in mind every time I go to a show. Now it's like waiting for the next band to roll up with the giant light. <laughs> You're like, yeah, you guys were good, but like, where are you from? I mean, lights, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Do you even know the refectory? Like, <laughs> uh, you might want to get with it. So, <laughs> um, well, that being said, for all of you guys, what's one thing you think you would change about the current musical landscape? Uh, I feel like the experience between like, or actually I should say really more like the relationship between bands, promoters and venues should really, I don't know, open up more. Uh, I feel like it it can be so difficult to navigate and, and honestly kind of daunting. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I, not, not to say that, uh, everyone is like, uh, makes themselves like closed off or like difficult to reach, but some, I don't know. Like I, I could even like relate like in terms of, uh, booking, uh, shows. Like sometimes it's like, it's difficult to take on every single show that like a band throws at you. If they're like, Hey, can you help me out? You're like, well, I've already helped out like five different bands this week. And like, (laughs) you know, like, you know, it's going to make you busy too, because you have to like, you have to attend the show and and make sure that it's properly promoted. Like you don't want to short anybody on attention or give everybody what they deserve. But right. uh, I think ultimately, like, it, there needs to be a, a it, it needs to open up more, uh, it, it, make it easier for people to access uh, venues of the same caliber and um, to have an opportunity to really grow right. in the same way. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. Hmm. Um, I mean, I would I would say I feel like, uh, let's say specifically, obviously, we know the Connecticut scene the best. Um I'd say that there is somewhat of a community and it's definitely gotten better. Um, but I still feel like 
there's a lot of bands that really, um, let's just put it this way. I feel like we as a band really try and go out of, out of our way to, um, help all of the other bands that we, uh, play with. Um, you know, we, there's not really any bands that we would turn down and like not want to play with. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's just, I don't know. It's weird. Like I talked about this with, with John the other day and, um, I think, you probably find it in most scenes. There's a little bit, even if it's sort of like an unspoken thing, sort of like a comp competition sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can get that for the bands that are really working hard. Um, but it's just, I don't know. I just feel like there's the, the bands within the, within this, you know, within, our, within our state or within our own little music scene could really work together a lot more. Um, I mean, we have, we have, uh, different, uh, I guess, uh, pr promotion groups or whatever you'd call it. Like you have things like CT versus mm -hmm. what would that be? That would be like a, I mean, they, they like run a blog, but right. they, I mean, they're, they're kind of like what I'm talking about here is like right. the idea of, uh, really giving every band an equal Avenue to gain, you know, followers and, and exposure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. I mean, they, he releases, uh, these little videos that are attached to uh, new songs that are released literally every single week. And sometimes every day I, I, I like find bands that I'm like, how have I, yeah. you know, never seen this yeah. before. So it's definitely a big shout out to CT versus and also CT scramble. Those are two really, uh, really good things in our scene uh, that we're really fortunate to have. Um, but, so that sounds awesome. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's actually a great um, point to bring up. Um, Robbie, you run the Math Rock Around the Clock Instagram and Spotify page, correct? Or the I do. Yeah, I do. And uh, I'll be completely honest. Uh, I started that. I think it's been a little over a year and um, I was going pretty hard on it for a while. And I you know what? Honestly, the band really picked up. Um, a lot of other life things happen. So it's really, that's been pretty quiet. Um, probably for the last, I don't know, five months. Um, I actually had a buddy that I met in another band called Nam the Giver. I met him on Instagram. Um, and he, his band is from, uh, Sacramento, California. Oh. And he actually, um, has come on and like, you know, he, he had been helping me for a while. He's still helping. And he actually started uh, a West Coast version and it's called Math Rock Around the Block. Oh, um, nice. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and again, neither of those are really, they're not really too active right now. Um, I plan on picking those up again. Um, but honestly, you know, my main focus right now is uh, with the refectory. And, you know, that just took up, I mean, it was, it was just, it was eating into the time that I needed to put in other places. So mm -hmm. it's still there, but, um, yeah, well, I got I think to do some cool stuff. Yeah. It's great. It shows that you're being an advocate for kind of your local scene and then some, and just trying to generate an interest in it. Uh, I mean, I know when I looked through it and I saw the playlist cause I'm a, I'm a humongous Spotify playlist maker and sharer and nice. lover. I have a million of them, but, um, yeah, I I would say everything you guys just answered to that question, I would agree with. It's really hard from the outside looking in, I think, to witness a thriving local music scene and understand why it's thriving or like right. to see areas where it could be improved. And I think at the base level, it does start with um, creating more meaningful connections between artists. Absolutely. And just giving them a bigger platform, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think venues are a big part of it too. You need like a good, you need more than just like one good venue. Um, and then like, I feel like there's so many different levels and layers. There's like, you know, the basic like DIY house spots and the grassroots level. And then mm -hmm. you've got your like smaller, uh, like bar venues. And then those like mid, mid level, like 200 person rooms all the way up to, you know, like the concert theaters. Um, but if each layer is healthy, I think that's important because right. the, the bands need a place to play. If, if you have, you know, a thousand amazing bands and there's no venues to play, you don't really have a scene. Right, know? right, yeah. right. But at the same time, like, if you have a hundred great venues and no bands, it's, you know, it's, you've got, <laughs> got nothing. So. Yeah, you, you need to have a healthy musical ecosystem, I guess. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah it's all connected. Hmm. So 
uh, what can you guys tell me about, I guess, the, like, craziest or most memorable show you've had? Oh. <laughs> uh, I have one that comes to mind, but it was it was pre-refectory. Should I? I, I could it. tell. It was, so this one always stands out. This was, uh, again, from our band, John and, and my band, The Ghost Sonata. Um, we, it was actually an old venue in Connecticut and it was called the puppet house and it's creepy. Yeah. And it was like, I think it was like North Haven, Connecticut or something like that. And, uh, so we went to play this show and we get there and we walk in and it literally was an old puppet house. Like it wasn't. It basically yeah. there was old puppets like hanging on the walls <laughs> and like it was super dark, super dusty. Um, the like, people running the venue were questionable. Um, <laughs> it, so at one point we're all sitting just like on this bench in this before the show started. before the show started. And <laughs> I guess the guy running the show or the owner of the puppet house, uh, he came over to us and he just looked at all of us. And mind you, at the time, I think we were maybe like 19. 19, yeah. And he w- he just looked at us and he was like, uh, what did he say? He said, he said, do you, he said, do any of you do heroin? Right. Oh, yeah. And, and we all just started and laughing. And we la- started like, laughing. And then he like, just. What a weird joke. Yeah. And he just kept like this dead face. <laughs> and he just, and he just looked back, of a, looked back at us and was like, well, some people do. And just walked <laughs> away. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and we were like, "What? What just happened?" <laughs> yeah. Where are we? Um, and then, <laughs> and then, and then we realized that basically this this puppet house venue was a front for like, oh. yeah, drugs. selling heroin. <laughs> yeah. There was people coming in and out of like the side room, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there were like a hundred people there that night, but none of them stayed for yeah. the show. <laughs> and, and when we went, and when we went to start playing, we're I mean, we've even since then we've been a super loud band and the guy that same guy comes up before we start, he's like he's like, Oh no, I know this room. He's like, You gotta turn like down to like two and that's it sounds the best and we're like, dude, that no, that doesn't make any sense. It sounds no. louder when you get a quiet. He's like, I know the room. <laughs> You just don't oh. want the cops to come. <laughs> yeah, the, wall, the wall whisperer. Yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah, that was brutal. So good. That was, yeah, that was interesting. Oh, man. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hmm, how do I follow that question? I guess. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, what's, your, what's your favorite part? Now, I know you guys did mention, you know, you really like the intimate settings, the small house shows and stuff. Um, what, what What's a less heroin um related positive <laughs> memory <laughs> from one of your shows <laughs> um let's see i wasn't in the band yet but that lyric hall show is a lot of fun oh yeah was, lyric hall yeah that was really actually we played two shows together at yeah lyric hall. actually yeah uh the, we, we uh those shows are always really cool it's this really uh cool venue called lyric <laughs> hall um that it's pretty much like a they don't always operate as a venue but um you can kind of rent it out i'm pretty sure they're still doing it it's like an old-timey like vaudeville theater yeah 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 Yeah. like the early 1900s yeah yeah it's awesome the room is super tiny so it's like really intimate um it's like a i don't know like a four foot stage maybe Right. But yeah. But it's really tall. Yeah. Too. Really, yeah, yeah, really high. Like so the acoustics in there are really nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, cool. uh, uh, my well. favorite show there was actually um, so Nick plays in another band called Ourselves Alone, and their bassist had a birthday party and just had a bunch of bands come through. Uh, it was just a yeah, really nice like warm environment the whole yeah. night. Yeah. 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 It was really cool. Yeah. It was cool. It was really cool. I'm I'm uh, trying to do that when I turn thirty in October. I'm trying to okay. figure out if I can just yeah like pay for a venue just to have all my favorite friends bands come play but yeah, oh that's totally. a great idea well hey you only turned 30 once so yeah. right <laughs> right right yeah. definitely do yeah it was it was an amazing experience everybody had a great time yeah it was I really yeah. highly yeah. recommend it hmm. yeah giving me some really good ideas from everything from running out venues to getting my own synchronized light bar yeah do just, it just to have in my life just to do have it for everything. <laughs> you get mad, I'm brushing you just my turn teeth. on the red lights. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I'm brushing my teeth. It's like blue going yeah. to the pulse and stuff. No. <laughs> okay. I have a couple more, uh, you know, general kind of serious aspiration questions. But um, what, what would you guys say is the best advice you can give for anyone 
who does find themselves forming a band and they want to get started. Have fun. Have fun. It's don't supposed- don't yell at people. Don't, don't yell. <laughs> It's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be fun. I don't know. Like, it's supposed to be something you enjoy. You know, if you're doing it, do it because you love to do it. Right. If it starts to feel like a chore, then, then I don't know, do something else. Right. It's, right. It's supposed to be something you enjoy. Yeah. I, I think, I, to that point, the other, I think the other end of it, though, it, it took us a very long time um, to get to the spot where we had to sort of perceive the band as this big creative outlet where we're, you know, making music mm-hmm. and having a great time. And then also seeing it as a business because right. at the end of the day, it really is. And if you're yeah. trying to move forward as a band, you yeah. have to perceive it that way. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, it, that side of it is, oh, it's just not, it's right. not fun. It's not, it's, it's, there's nothing fun about it. But if you want to do certain things as a band, you, you, you have to do both of those. Right. It depends fun, on your priorities. Yeah. Right, right. I think the fun comes in in that we enjoy doing well as a band. Right. You know, it's fun to right. like play a packed show. It's fun to like right. s- have something come out and have it get a good reception. Yeah. Like it's no fun when you like put your heart and soul into something, you release it and then nobody cares. You right. Know, that's not fun. Right. So the fun aspect comes with that, with like putting some hard work in and then like seeing it pay off. That's <laughs> right. That, that's rewarding. Really Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of, I think right. what led us to take it more seriously. And, yeah. and, and I would say for, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're in high school starting a band, I think, yeah, just go into it, have fun and see if you like it. Um, and I would say, but I would say as, as you, you know, move forward with a band, I would say a couple things to really think about that I think even early on in other projects we didn't really think about is, you know, the more, one, the more members you have, the more schedules you have to deal with, the more planning and organizing you have to do. And, you know, it, it, the more members, the harder it is. The more uh, guarantees you have to split too. Let's face exactly, it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Kick out that second guitarist. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That's right. It's unfortunate, but you know, it's true. If you're really trying to move forward and do this as a living, uh, yeah. You know, it, it, the less members, the better. As far as you know. Yeah, and it's also good to get everybody on the same page. Make sure you all have like a shared right. idea of what you want the band to be and where you want it to go. Right. right. If one Set person long term goals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If one person just wants to like get drunk and you know, shred some scales, and another person is trying to make it their livelihood, <laughs> those are going to be in direct conflict. Right. You know? Which right, one of right. you is that? <laughs> Uh, no, I, oh, it man. definitely used to be me. <laughs> definitely used to be me. But I still wanted it just as just as badly. But you know, yeah, yeah, it's better now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would you say then are your goals for the refectory? Just you know, in the next year or so. We're gonna have a record come out. Uh, we're gonna try to tour the country. We are going to. We're tour. gonna tour the country. Um. Yes. Yeah. Operatively. Yeah. We're, we're planning gonna release we're, some videos. We're planning on doing uh, somewhere around September, maybe into October. We're planning on doing a full month, which would be the longest tour that we've ever done in any of our bands. Um, and that will be, I think, we're planning on starting. I don't know, maybe somewhere maybe like Tennessee or maybe somewhere close to there and then sort of pushing out through the West and doing like a West coast thing. And then, you know, kind of heading back. Um, so that, that's, that's definitely a big thing, uh, a big for us. Um, and there's been, you know, there's been a lot of changes as far as, you know, how we're setting up our lives to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, there's, there's definitely sacrifices that come along with that. Um, but I think that, you know, we all, we all want it that badly. You know, we all, we all, you know, it's, it's what we love and we, we want to, we want to really, uh, I don't know, take a leap of faith. Yeah. You know, you, you kind of have to, I, I, I feel like that. Um, you kind of got to just take that leap at some point or you just kind of flounder. Have right. you guys played on the West coast at all ever? I mean, that is literally have, across the country. We have yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. The, the ah. farthest, the farthest we had ever been, uh, was Missouri, and then yeah. uh, our van, uh, the rear, the rear axle. We were we were like on this highway. We were heading to Chicago, right outside of Chicago. We're going over the Mississippi River. Mississippi River, and then one of the one of our members. Uh, this was our older band. Uh, he was like, I think something something's on fire, and literally <laughs> spraying flames out of like where the back right tire is. Yeah. 
Um, so then, you know, uh, yeah, that was our Missouri trip. And then we actually, John and I actually, we camped outside of a Starbucks <laughs> yeah. in like oh. downtown St. Louis. Yeah. John in and I tent. pitched yeah. a tent yep. and, uh, we slept. Yeah. It was, slept overnight. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> have, uh, lived a lot of life as a band. <laughs> Holy hell. That was, yeah, that was a mess. It was. I cut our tour short. Yeah. So yeah. goals for the future are to not have the van catch on fire and make yes. it to the Pacific Ocean. Okay, uh, got it. That's right. Yeah. Got yeah. it. That's right. Wow. That's, uh, hmm. Hey, that's reality, though, for a lot of touring bands, you know? It's just, yeah. it is what it so, is, and, and you want to do it, and you do it anyway. Get a good story out of it. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. So, uh, in in any realm of life, then, who would you guys consider your biggest influences? Doesn't Ooh. just have to be musicians; it could be anybody. Mm. Interesting. John was my biggest influence. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> biggest influence in life. It's a tough question. Yeah, it is. Oh, you really hate my last question, then. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, a big musical influence for me was Vince Rogers, the early drummer from Terra Mellos. Mm. He kind of changed the way that I like looked at music or, or heard sure. music. Agreed. And, and, like what was possible. He kind of unlocked some things in my brain. Um, that was a big musical inf influence. But I don't play the drums, so it's like a it's a weird one. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't expecting you to say that. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my agreed. Dream. He's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely like top three favorite drummers for sure. For yeah, me. And he doesn't even play drums anymore. It's crazy. Hmm. Is he? What That's, does he do? He like he. Uh, I think he's like a, a running coach and a teacher, and he just what? like hikes in towns all the time. Yeah, he just gave Damn. it up. What? He's just done. Wow. That's. I think he did everything he wanted to do with it, and then <laughs> wow, he transcended. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like Forrest Gump. He like <laughs> yeah. ran across the country a bunch of times. <laughs> he's just like, okay. I think I'm, I think I'm done now yeah. <laughs> with <Right>. this life. <laughs> Yeah, wow. he left right as they were starting to get big. So like, I'm all done. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I think Kurt Vonnegut is like one of my oh, heroes great answer. for sure. Like, uh, I grew up like just plowing through all of his books, and um, I don't know. I just love that his mind is so crazy and honest, and like all over the place but super connected all at the same time and uh he just he accounts for like all i don't know he just accounts for human experience even like the super embarrassing shit that's just like no one wants to necessarily point out um hmm. and I, I don't know i i love that the idea of like a creative concept that could like almost only come from one mind that's mm -hmm. like what, really what's awesome. your favorite vonnegut novel uh galapagos Oh, I have not read that one. It's really awesome. Yeah. yeah. I know yeah. I've done Slaughterhouse Five and Cat's Cradle, but both um, great books, yeah. Are there any oh, I hope I'm not missing any references. Are there any refectory song titles that are Vonnegut uh references? No, I don't think so. No. Will there be in the future? There might be. There might be. If yeah. Nick starts writing lyrics. Definitely, definitely a reference to uh, I Think You Should Leave, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. In the works. Have you seen that series? Crap, dang it. Yeah, have you ever, have you ever, have you ever seen that show? Uh-uh, uh, no. You should leave. Oh, my God. You Highly need, recommend it. You should watch Fantastic. it. Fantastic. If you like awkward humor, that's oh. all Sometimes, for you. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Super dark awkward humor. Yeah. I think you should leave. Yeah, yeah I think indeed. you should leave. It's, it's on Netflix. It's like... Some dude who used to run right for uh, SNL, and yeah. then they were just like, "You're weird." Yeah, <laughs> and he was like, "Fine, Netflix accepts me right, for yeah. who I am." Yeah. So. Right. Doing even I'm better. Gonna end, I'm gonna end every podcast interview that way now. Okay, yeah. I think you should leave. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you should. I think you should leave. <laughs> That's kind of funny that we're bringing this up as we close this down, sort of though. But um, I think you should leave. No, my. My my typical last question then is usually this, uh, and it is the evil question of if you could only listen to three albums for the rest of your life, what would they be? Ooh. Oh man, <sighs> interesting. <laughs> so deep sigh. Yeah. Um, uh, I I'd go with uh, Terror Hawk uh, by Bear vs Shark, mm. um, Ribbons and Sugar. Uh, by Gatsby's American Dream and 
my third would be ooh that's hard i love uh, math rock band names by the way because these that's just how they are <laughs> <laughs> um i i there i definitely i've gotten into them more recently i don't know if they'd be all time i'm just gonna say um birds in row um yeah. their last release i think was it called love is political or is that one of the names of the songs one of the names. Is it, uh, we, versus, no. we no that's another well it's uh birds in row their last uh release um definitely influenced i think a lot of the some at least some of the heavier stuff that we've gotten into hmm. um within the last few years we already lost the world we already lost the world that's the name of it Huh, I'm not familiar with that. I'll have to check that oh, out. Amazing. Really yeah. good, really Definitely good. on my list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd probably go with that album, uh, Yeast by Joanna Newsom, and then 40 Rods, or um, uh, Drugs to the Dear Youth by Tara Mellos. Woo! Huh. Yeah, those would be my top three. Uh, I'm going to go with, because we'll probably all wind up on the same island. Like, I could totally listen <laughs> to those. Because Drugs to the Dear Youth would have been one of mine, yeah. but now I got it. Um, Four Great Points by June of 44. What Burns Never Returns by Don Caballero. Mm. And Dreamliner by Brighter Arrows. Nice. Sweet. Giving me a lot of new material to look up. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know, hey, I mean, I know Don, Don Caballero's. About it. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say it. Yeah. It's Pittsburgh. Yeah. yeah. What, what is the Pittsburgh scene like? The Pittsburgh scene is like 97% stoner rock. Really? Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I say that uh, like I'm not friends with everyone in a stoner rock band here. But yeah, it's it's really um, metal leaning. We have a lot of good folk and indie artists, though. I'm just I don't really kind of run in that scene. Gotcha. But, uh, I went to my first hip hop show two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it sounds kind of similar to Connecticut where you can just kind of throw a dart at a genre and chances are there's a show that, sure, night that you sure, can go sure. sort of sate your appetite with. Um, and I'm thankful for that. But yeah, we're, I don't know, I guess it's the kind of blue collar working class sort of town where everyone just wants to go drink a bunch of beer and headbang. Yeah, so, yeah right. I got you. What, yeah. uh, I have no problem with that. You said yeah, that really. The scene you're what scene do you run with? Like, what do you... The definitely definitely metal stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've yeah. gotten into like the, the doom psychedelic stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm a big prog nerd, so... Okay. Uh, nice. You know, any, any tech death show that swings through, I'm usually going to... I nice. was I saw thrice on Monday, so oh, it, nice. it kind of depends, it, it, you know, any yeah. day of the week, really. That's awesome. And is that the kind of music that you play? Like you said, you play drums. I do. I'm not in any bands right now. I'm always okay. constantly like in a perpetual state of jamming with people. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. But yeah. we'll see. I mean, it is kind of inspiring. You know, you guys can make it work with three people and some pedals and some creativity, like. There's yeah. no reason I can't, you know, get the right people together, but um, it's a work in progress. You yeah. could do it. Right. You could do it. I'm Just trying. get some lights. We believe Just in you. Get Just some get light. some lights. <laughs> Just get some lights and start drumming. They'll come. Want to see my lights? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, is there anything else you guys want to, you know, get out there while, while you're still on the air, I guess? I got to get this off my chest. Though. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> this is a shout out to uh, Clothes Horse. <laughs> just want to give a shout out to Clothes Horse real quick. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, that requires a little. Yeah. A little context. Okay. okay. Yeah. So okay, so we. Super all right, so we, we play. <laughs> we played the show. We uh, didn't play. We didn't. Oh, this was the no. Okay. <laughs> we so didn't it was play it was uh, a Long Island show that we went to play uh, with this band, our buddies in this band called Wait and Shackle, put on by their buddy Waffle, um, Waffle. and it was this big Waffle out Fest. Waffle. It's Waffest. Yes, Waffest. Uh, he's an awesome dude. Uh, but uh, so it was like supposed to be this big outdoor um, house show slash party, yeah. and he had done it for the uh, the couple of years uh, prior. And so we were like, all right, then dude, he should be good. We get there. Uh, it was probably about six o'clock and we had just finished unloading all of our gear behind this outdoor stage. And then uh, we see Waffle talking to a cop and we're like, no, oh, no. <laughs> Great. 
So it was shut down like literally after we had just unloaded all our gear. Oh, and of course. So, yeah. Um, but so after that, we were driving back and it, it took us a different way than we had gone, I think, originally down there. <laughs> and we were going through like a lot of like uh, like a lot of like pa- passing like a lot of different strip malls and stuff. And there was this one strip mall that John like turned his head and noticed and he started reading off the names yeah. of these different places. Like, please, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Like, please, please, mom. Please, mom. Yeah. And then there was one called uh, Incredible Feels. <laughs> Seriously. And then and then Clothes Horse. Clothes Horse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. what, what kind horse. of strip mall is this? Yeah. yeah. So now we, we're like an equine, you know, yeah. themed band. Yeah. You know, we're all cowboys. <laughs> right. So. Oh right. man. So that we give is a shout out to Close Horse. So I think closed so down. Awesome. Yeah. Close yeah. I think bad. that whole strip mall is closed now. But yeah. Right. This was like uh, two months ago or something. Yeah. Now. Or back in the summer. When was this? This Please, was uh, yeah. back in Please, September. Mom. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I'm so Nick, glad you shared that. <laughs> yeah, and and one last little thing. Nick actually uh, is a bartender at a local brewery. It's also the spot that he books at. And he was uh, pouring a glass of wine for a lady the other day. <laughs> and uh, it's called – So it's called Horse Heaven Hills, right? But, That's um, the name oh. of the brewery? No, no, oh. no. The, na- the name of the brewery is called the Beer X. It's like a – it's a brew collective, so we have a shit ton of different brewers there. But but we also offer wine for people who don't drink beer because why would you go to a brewery and expect to you know not drink beer? Right. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so we have this red wine. It's called Horse Heaven Hills. But uh, Robbie showed uh, me this band Dive, and yeah. uh, they have a song called Horse Head, and like I love it. I think it's such a good song. Um, but I like one time I was serving people and I was like, oh yeah, we have the horse head heaven <laughs> Cabernet. and they were like, what the fuck is that? And yeah. like I brought over the bottle and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. It's the horse, horse heaven Hills. <laughs> and they were like, like, I just like, I handed them the bottle and I heard them laugh at me as I walked away and I was like, yeah, I deserve this for sure. Yeah. That was stupid. So yeah, horses have been following us around. Yeah. And I actually <laughs> live on a horse farm now. Yeah. So. Oh my God. Uh, I live across yeah. the street from a horse farm. Yeah. So, they're everywhere. Oh, they're everywhere. It's interesting. And I'm terrified of horses. So oh, this is oh. perfect. Oh, it's come so full sorry. circle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not terrified by hilarious stories about horses, but I just don't like them in person. But okay. So you heard it here on Tapestry episode 36. The next Refectory album is definitely going to have songs about horses in some way, shape or form. Yes, yeah, Giddy yeah. up. Okay. I'm calling it now. <laughs> I'm going to giddy up. That's please make that your entire promotional material for everything. So, but <laughs> giddy up. That might just be yeah. my episode intro, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> guys thank you (laughs) thank you for giving me some laughs likewise hope you enjoyed that interview with the refectory if you want to check them out on social media their handles are the refectory ct that's ct as in connecticut on instagram and then just search for the refectory on bandcamp facebook all that stuff they're available on most streaming platforms and hey i did have a chance to go check out that ct versus site is a very very cool way to discover new musicians and doesn't mean you have to be from connecticut to listen so just go check out what's happening in their scene lots of cool stuff as always thanks for listening Section,